Good afternoon. Welcome to the Humidor Report. Justin here from Beaumont's very own Cigar Club. You know, there are a lot of misconceptions in the cigar world. And with so many different brands, makers, blends, types of tobacco, that's not a hard thing to accomplish. Uh, some people think that light-colored cigars are mild and dark-colored cigars are strong. Not necessarily true. Some people also think that the owner of Alec Bradley Cigars is some guy named Alec Bradley. Well, it's not. His name is actually Alan Rubin, and when he started this company many, 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 many moons ago, he named the company after his two sons, Alec and Bradley. Well, now as time goes on, Alec and Bradley aren't kids anymore, and they're getting in on Dad's business. And in fact, they started that up just a few years ago in 2018 when they launched the Alec and Bradley Blind Faith. Now, the following year was the release of their second offering as a, a, a new upstart, uh, I guess, fraternal cigar-making entity. And they teamed up with one of the legends of the industry, a guy by the name of Ernesto Perez Carrillo. If you're not familiar with Carrillo, he's the guy responsible for La Gloria Cubana, and he's responsible for all the stuff he has done since he left General Cigar, which includes the Inch Core Line Cardinal uh, Pledge, the new reigning cigar of the year, and as well as the Encore, which was Cigar of the Year a couple of years ago. Uh, but that's Carrillo with his own new boutique factory that he's opened in the Dominican Republic since his departure from General Cigar a number of years ago. Well, when Alan and Ruben were getting started on this for the new offering, the second offering of the Alec and Bradley series, they teamed up with somebody that was not just a seasoned guy in the biz, but to someone who to them was a gatekeeper. And that is where the name of this new cigar comes from. Say new, it's new to us, but it has was released in 2019. Uh, they did collab with Ernesto Perez Carrillo, and these were originally being made in Carrillo's La Alianza factory in the Dominican Republic. Now, the cigar as it is, you've got an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, you've got a Nicaraguan binder, and your filler tobacco is comprised of Nicaraguan and Dominican tobaccos. Uh, this cigar, launched in 2019, has done great so far. It's done so good so far, certainly for some relative rookie blenders in Alec and Bradley themselves, that this is the current number seven cigar on Cigar Aficionado's 2020 top 25 list. A really strong offering from those guys considering they've only been doing blending themselves a couple of years. Now, even though this cigar is still relatively new by comparison, there's already been some considerable changes in it, mostly where it's going to be produced going forward. About two months ago, it was announced that due to production issues on Carrillo's side, capacity issues, him trying to be able to keep up with everything he's making for himself and for other people, including these guys, including crowned heads, so on and so forth, that production is being moved. Now, they're in a transitional period right now, so there are currently cigars, gatekeeper cigars, being produced both in Alianza, in the Dominican Republic, and at Nestor Placencia's Tobacos de Orientes, one of the two factories I visited when I was in Honduras back in 2017. Now, what they say is that in this interim period, the cigars are being produced at both factories, but it was also said that you wouldn't be able to distinguish which factory it was made from based on the box, that everything would look exactly the same. Once full production moves into Honduras to Placencia's Orientes factory, then they'll be labeled made in Honduras and you'll know that the change is complete. Not only that, but it's supposed to move from a 20 count box to a 24 count box once all that production is moved to Honduras. However, we ordered these cigars when we placed our first Alec Bradley order, which I think was back early April of this year. And these have been on back order since. So we've waited some five, six months now before we even got our first boxes of it in. When we got them in today, I take a look at the bottom of both boxes. And sure enough, this one says made in the Dominican Republic. And this one says made in Honduras. So we do know which factory each of these came from. And we're going to give you a look at each of these sticks here a little more close up. And I know we've got a little glare happening right now, but I, I wonder if you can notice the slight difference in wrapper color. Uh, you'll always have that with regular production cigars. You'll see some shifts in color, even from stick to stick, sometimes from box to box. But if you'll notice these two, uh, whether it's even visible through the seal of fame with the glare, I'm not sure. But to me, 
The Robusto that I have here has clearly got a lighter wrapper going on than the Toro. Now, the Robusto is being made, or at least as far as these boxes, the Robustos are coming out of Honduras, whereas the Toros are coming out of the Dominican Republic. So, whereas they say there's not going to be any difference in the cigars with the change in production, maybe. Yeah, there's, like I said, we already can see at least a little bit of wrapper difference. Both the wrappers do look very good. I like the darker color that we're getting on the Toro a little bit better. Uh, but again, uh, for all intents and purposes, that doesn't necessarily mean that there's going to be any big flavor difference between the two. But if you're curious about Gatekeeper as a blend to begin with, or in the possible differences in where they're being produced, we've got an example of each factory's production on the table. Now, these are the only two sizes we have right now. There are four total sizes. There's the Corona, the Robusto, the Toro, and a 6x60 Gordo. But for now, we have Robusto, and we have the Toro, and we've got both factories producing the product represented. So if you'd like to do a little side-by-side -side and maybe see if you can pick up any differences between the two, come in, grab some, smoke them, and let me know. Tell me what you think. Are they the same thing box to box, or do you get something off of one that you might not get off the other, or vice versa? But that, again, is the gatekeeper. Uh, they said that this change is going to be happening in stages, so I don't know how long we'll have both factories represented. But again, the end goal is eventually they will all be made in Honduras. Uh, but we should know when that, has, when that has happened, when we see the new 24 count boxes come out. But this is Gatekeeper, current number seven cigar from Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 of last year on the shelf and ready to go. So thanks so much for tuning in. Hopefully we gave you something a little interesting today, a little more than normal since there's a little bit more story to this one. Uh, but we do hope you guys come by and check it out. Uh, let us know what you think and uh, check out all the other new stuff we've got coming. We've got a bunch of stuff on order right now. So hopefully we'll be seeing some replenishment. A lot of stuff is hard to get right now. I believe just due to COVID delays, well, there's a lot of back orders with manufacturers right now that so many things that people come in and ask for that we just can't get right now. If it's on back order, it is what it is. Uh, took us this long to get these guys, but hopefully we won't be seeing those delays going forward. Hopefully this regular production item is going to hit that regular availability soon enough. So that's going to wrap it up for this week's edition. Thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, share the video so everybody else can know what's happening over here. And we'll be back with you next week, same place, same time, with another episode of the Humidor Report. So until then, I'm Justin, and we'll see you at the club.